Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com and today I'm going to give you guys five tips for being a successful new technician. This is episode 143 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. All right, so I get asked all the time, Charles, what does it take to be a successful technician? I'm coming out of school, I'm getting out of school, I'm still in school, and I'm petrified about getting a job at the dealership, at an independent shop, whatever. So it's a question I've answered a lot of times, so I thought I'd, you know what, put some of these tips into all one video, that way you guys have it all in one compact spot. So I'm gonna be giving you guys five things that you can do to be a better new technician. Hey, this might even apply to being a better old technician. And remember that these are not the only five things you need to do. These are just five of the top things you need to do. There's a ton of things, ton, that it takes to be a successful technician. And as a new technician, sometimes it'll just take you some time to learn. So let's get right into it. Number one is knowing your role. Look, let's be honest. You're the new guy, right? You're the FNG uh, for you guys that know what that means. So you're the new guy. You're gonna be doing things that you think this is dumb and has no relevance to me learning how to fix cars. And well, some of that is true. Some of it doesn't have any relevance to you fixing cars. Stacking tires doesn't teach you how to fix cars. But these are important things because these are things that need to get done in the shop. A lot of times the new guy is the hourly guy. So some of those tasks will go to the new guy. It's great when you're on flat rate because then you don't have to do it and basically not get paid for it. But it's good for you to become part of the team. If you're the one willing to stack the tires without crying about how you don't like stacking tires, if you're the one that's willing to run cars down to the car wash and get them washed, that says to the team, right, to the rest of the technicians, I know this isn't the like learning how to fix cars type stuff, but I'm part of the team. I'm putting in my work. I'm doing my part to show you guys, look, I'm willing to do this because I want the end goal. I want to be a technician. So we all did it, right? I remember doing it as a, as a new guy. It sucks but keep your mouth closed, get your work done, and show the rest of the guys and gals in the shop that you're willing to do this because that they will see. And becoming part of like the shop click is incredibly important. You need all the rest of these guys more than they need you. And remember that sometimes, you know, a little bit of a blow to the ego, but you do need them. You need someone to learn from. So like I said, it stinks but it's part of the job. Number two, never, ever, ever stop working. If I give you a task to do, let's say stack the tires and you finish, great. Don't stand in that one spot and wait for me to tell you something else to do. I'm, I'm laughing because I've seen this happen so many times. Find something else to do. Come find me and we'll figure out something else to do. But don't just stand there like a zombie and wait. Wait for someone to tell you what else to do. Look around the shop and see what people are doing. See what tasks need to get done, right? Does the trash need to be taken out? Does a car need to be ran through the car wash? We just talked about that last example of, of doing all those little things that you are doing as the new guy. It doesn't really matter. Just always keep working. Because when I see you standing around, to me that just says, I am either too lazy to think something to do, or I really don't care. And both of those are two examples two mindsets that you don't want the rest of the shop to think that you're in, because if you're not willing to put in the effort to help them, a lot of times they're not gonna be willing to put in the effort to help you. All right, number three, try it first. This goes for anything that, if you try it and mess it up, will not cause the shop to be in a bad spot. So what I mean by try it first is, let's say I tell you, hey, new technician, go set the clock on that car, and you say, I don't know how to do that. And I say, okay, well, why don't you try? And then you tell me, I don't know how to do that. Go freaking try to set the clock. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're going to reset the customer's trip meter. And while that may be a hassle, it's really not that big of a deal. So just try it. If you mess it up, it's okay. Look, you're gonna make mistakes anyway. As a new technician, as an old technician, everywhere in between, mistakes are gonna get made. If not getting the clock set right is the worst thing that happens throughout the day, that is a good dang day. Give it a try. You're never gonna be able to figure out the answers to the questions that you don't know if you don't just try it. Sometimes it's gonna work out poorly and you're gonna screw stuff up. Most of the time, even if it doesn't work out perfect, you're gonna at least learn how to do it. So just give it a try. If you're not willing to try at all, you're gonna have a hard time in a shop because technicians are gonna see that instantly. He's too lazy to try. She's too lazy to try. 
She doesn't care enough to even try how to set the clock. Just give it a shot. If you screw it up, ask how to do it. Open the owner's book. All the answers to most of these situations that we run into, the information is somewhere. Owner's book, repair manual, other technicians. It's all out there, but you gotta go get it. Don't expect someone to grab you by the hand and put you in the car and say, okay, Mr. Technician, here's how you set the clock. We save that for customers. Customers get that kind of treatment. You don't, you have to figure it out on your own. And while that can be frustrating, if you can figure out how to set the clock when you didn't know, think about all the other things that you can figure out how to do that you didn't know. Rebuild an engine, rebuild a transmission, reprogram a computer, I don't know, you name it. If you're willing to put in the work to try the little things, in my mind you're gonna be able to, or willing to put the work in to try the big things. But if you won't even learn how to do a little thing like reset pinch protection on the windows, or set the clock, or program radio presets, in what world do I think you're gonna put the effort in to do the hard stuff? Number four, be patient. This takes time. You are not gonna come out of school a master certified technician. You are not gonna come out of school with 10 years of automotive repair experience. Despite the sales pitch that you may or may not have gotten from your tech school, you're still coming in as the new guy, right? Go all the way back to, to tip number one. You're still coming in as the new guy. This takes time. Learning takes time. It took me about a year to 18 months before I felt comfortable coming in every day. I wasn't worried, oh God, what job am I gonna get now? Am I gonna be able to figure it out? I didn't know what job I was gonna get, but I knew. I knew I'd be able to figure it out because I tried and I didn't stop working and I was patient, right? So understand that this takes time. You are not gonna come out of tech school and be the fastest tech in the shop. If you are, you're probably doing a hack job, so that would raise a red flag for me. The big thing for you is do your work correctly. Take your time, do it 100% correctly first. Then worry about speed. Speed comes. Speed comes with repetition. Speed comes with analyzing how you're working and fine tuning it. Speed comes with not standing at the parts department for 15 minutes waiting on someone that's not there. Speed comes with going to work, doing what you can do, and then walking by and hopefully the parts department is available at that point in time. Dealing with parts is a whole other separate issue, we'll say for another day. But if this is on you, right? This is about you. You have to be patient. You have to understand this is going to take time. I care a lot more about a new guy doing work correctly than I care about them doing it fast. Now there's times where I need it done quick, but that's my problem, right? That's not a learning situation. That's not a situation I try and put new technicians in because I want them to take their time. I want them to follow the repair manual. I want them to do bolt by bolt, step by step. I want them to do it correctly because if it's not, then it takes even more time. And then I have to get involved. So just understand that it will take you time to be a good technician. All right, that was four tips. Number five is actually going to be coming from someone else, but him and I agree 100% on this fifth one. This is gonna be coming from Todd Gordon, who's Joey Logano's crew chief. So professional race team crew chief. And I asked him, what does it take for a new technician to become part of your team, to get on a race team like yours, you know, at the highest, highest level? And uh, his answer was awesome. Very much in line with how I feel and what I think it does take to be a really good new technician. All right, so Todd, thank you for taking a few minutes to chat with me about this topic. And uh, guys, check out his answer because I think you're gonna love it. I think, you know, it's, it's obviously work ethic's the biggest piece. I think that in, in racing, it's still those that, those that you, you know, your effort is rewarded. Uh, finding a way to get to that point, but it's work ethic and, you know, the attention to details. So that's the biggest thing. In any position, if you can take care of all the details and make sure that they're they're covered, no mistakes, you'll be successful. People will want you to work on your stuff. And that's, that's one of the things I think is this whole team, the 22 team, does a phenomenal job of. Our guys don't, we make sure that we don't have mistakes that, that cost us, you know, the stupid mistakes. And it's, it's attention to detail, it's, it's, having a, it's having a system, and it's, it's being able to back check yourself to make sure that it's right. All right, guys, there you have it, five, five tips 
for being a new technician, remember these are not the only five things that you need to do. Understand that this is a process and it will take time. So if you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.